Hey everybody, you know what time it is? It's time to take all of my solid reclaim for wood firing and run it through my pug mill and get ready to make the first pots for my first wood firing ever in my brand new kiln. Let's go. All right guys, here we are. I tell you what, there's something that I, I just really, it's really satisfying in multiple ways about taking reclaimed clay or clay that wasn't used at a previous time and running it through a pug mill, getting it all nice and blended and smooth and just ready to make brand new pots out of. Whether this was uh, reclaimed from a, another pot or whether it was just like I said, pugged and then not used. I have the combination of of cleaning up out from under my table all these sporadic bags of clay. I have that spring cleaning satisfaction plus I have the I guess the satisfaction that you're you're taking what was waste and getting ready to make something amazing out of it and to me it's just a great feeling. So uh, and having a workhorse like this Venco Pug Mill to do it with um, it's a blessing. It's a treat. So uh, we're gonna pug some clay. Look at that. <laughs> That's pretty wild there. Between the different kinds of clay and the bacteria that's that's grown in this over time. We're getting all kinds of funny look there, but that's that's good clay right there. May not want to go directly to eating something with your hands after handling this before before washing up, but uh, either way it's good clay. This is some you know, like I said, a uh, whole bunch of mixed up stuff. I've got a couple more bags here, but uh, my table's getting full, so I'm gonna start pugging this. All this will probably be pugged uh, at least twice to make sure I get the mixture of the hard and soft clay mixed together, as well as the different kinds of clay, so it all kind of becomes homogenous. Now the, the first bit of clay that will be coming out of the pugger will be clay for my gas kiln. So I'll, uh, I'll take the first several pieces that come out, cut those up and bag those up and save those for when I go back to making pots for the uh, gas kiln. And then once, uh, once I see the clay starting to blend together, I'll keep that blended clay and I'll, I'll put you know majority of it that's, that's uh, wood, uh, clay for the gas kiln in with that clay. And then uh, any other that's mixed, I'll just run it back through and make it mix with all this.
All right, we finished pugging that clay, but that's been about three or four hours ago. I had to go to uh, school orientation with two of my kids, and so we went and did that, and then uh, went as a family, got something to eat, and so now I'm back. We uh, reclaimed almost 200 pounds of clay there, or re-ran, however you want to say it. Um, so a, a lot of that clay is, is fairly stiff, so uh, I'll be selective about what I make out of that based on how stiff the clay is, but I thought uh, that it'd be really cool now that you've seen that uh, process of reclaiming that clay to make the very first pot for my very first wood firing in my brand new kiln. So we're going to do that right now. I've got, um, I don't know, 12 or 13 pounds of clay over here that uh, I'm planning to either make a large uh, jug or a large jar depending on how things go. And I'm going to make that in uh, two sections. I'll make a, like an 8 pound bottom and then like a 4 pound top. Uh, like I said, it's somewhere around 12 to 13 pounds, uh, but we're going to work on that and uh, have a little uh, conversation and talk while we do that. So. Might be a bit ambitious to make something uh, this large out of this uh, stiff clay as you can probably tell by the amount of pressure and strength that's taken me to even center this the first four to four and a half pounds and then this second piece I put on there this clay is very stiff and I don't like to work with this stiff of clay that often because I don't like to wear out my well, it takes a lot of strength, number one, and also I know it's hard on my wrists and my forearms and my tendons and all that, so I try not to work with clay that's very stiff too often, or if I do, I make sure it's in uh, smaller amounts. So, probably after this, most of that clay is going to turn into, you know, three to four to maybe five pound pieces instead of <laughs> instead of ones this large. But I wanted to start with a with a bang for my first firing. And uh, I was looking back through some of my old videos today and I saw one of the videos I had of that uh, 12 pound lidded jar the cool thing is, is I actually remember, I remember finishing that piece and I remember selling that piece and I really like that jar and so I, uh, I was actually just talking about it the other day because that was one piece that during the firing a little piece of the, the kiln brick fell and landed on the lid of the pot as it was firing so that it was still stuck there when it came out of the kiln but it wasn't very large and I remember thinking that at first I was like oh no it's got something on the lid and then I realized you know what that's such a beautiful jar still that uh, I'm gonna view that as a uh, just an extra and I remember the guy who bought it I remember telling him having like hey you know this this has got a, a piece of the kiln on it so you got an extra bonus 
that you got part of the kiln to take home with you as well as the pot. So, uh, but anyway, I remember seeing that just earlier today, looking through my older videos and seeing the video of that lidded jar. And uh, I thought, oh yeah, I should make another jar that size. And so that's kind of what got me thinking about it. I have a few fascinations with certain shapes and certain styles of pots. One of them is definitely pitchers. And one of them is definitely lidded jars. And of course vases. I love throwing vases as well. But as of recently, pitchers and lidded jars or something. Yeah, I guess for a long time, pitchers especially have been. I didn't make a lot of lidded jars until the last, uh, really until I started wood firing about you know five or six years ago. I really got interested in, in making them and making the <clears throat> making those lids that I've made a video about where they kind of go in and over uh, the rim of the of the piece. Something about that style of jar that's just really attractive to me and I think just the craftsmanship of, of making that lid uh, the way I do and have to trim it and put the knob on it. Uh, there's something about that that I really enjoy. Uh, and I really appreciate that style of pot and uh, definitely partially been inspired by uh, some other potters that, that make lidded jars that I really admire the look of Mark Hewitt and Daniel Johnston and uh, Joseph Sand the, the guy I've been firing with for the last five years uh, they all make lidded jars of different styles and uh, definitely have always admired those so I'm not trying to pull this uh, too awful thin even though the clay is very stiff and I could probably get away with pulling it a little more thin than this I want to definitely have enough strength to work with so that I can belly it out some more once I get the top on so I'm probably going to stop at that um, as far as the pulling of it. Yeah, it's, it's pretty good. It's, it's pretty consistent all the way up. And then uh, that'll give us a little bit of room to work with when I put the second piece on for shaping. Alright, so I've got a mark on my wheel here so that I know when I take this bat off, of course I'm working with a wheel that has bat pins in it. So when I take this bat off, I know that this pin hole needs to go back on this pin. And I've got an X on my wheel head here. And then I'll just put a little bit of clay, but I'll, I'll set this down uh, so that that bat pin that I need to put back there is facing me. But I'll also put a little bit of clay around that bat pin hole on the bat so that I know that as well. And then we'll grab another bat here to make the, the top. I need to measure that one. That's something I forgot to do. All right, so it's 10 and a half inches. make this piece with an opening on the top ten and a half inches and uh, try to get the same thickness of that as well so that when I flip it over and put it on top it will match up in width and thickness that's the goal at least one thing about jars that I've realized is that the my initial thought of the shape that I needed to make to make the jar that I, the shape of jar I wanted is that the top needed to be smaller. Initially that was my initial thought that I needed to make it more like a vase would look. 
And the more I made them, the more I realized that the, uh, the opening of the top of the jar actually needs to be um, wider and considerably wider than the than the base of the pot to get the look that I'm going for. <clears throat> and so, in one way, that's easier because one of the challenges in making vases or pots that have a small top on them is that you got to bring that clay back in once you've pulled a cylinder and bellied the pot out. Uh, but like I said, good thing about making a, a jar like this is that you don't have to worry so much about having a small top on it. I'm more concerned about the shape of the jar um, and having that, uh, like I said, that's just an advantage to having that more wide mouth on it is that it's easier to accomplish. Of course, uh, throwing pots in sections like this actually makes it a lot easier to make a smaller top because I could actually, if I threw this piece that I'm going to put on top of that one, if I threw it in more of a V, when I put it on top, I would actually, the clay would already be going back in because I'd be flipping it over. And so making them in sections actually makes that process a lot easier. Um, but uh, even with that, I've made this one pretty wide at the base so that I don't have to stretch it out as much either once I, once I get to that point. clay on the inside and the outside around the bottom there just to cut down on the amount of thickness that's going to be on the top once I cut it free from the bat. get that last inch in width by stretching it out rather than trying to pull it. I went a little bit too far, but that's not that's no problem. I can bring this back in a little bit. Oh, went back in a little too far. Sometimes I hit that on the, the nail on the head the first time I try to get the exact width. Alright, there's ten and a half. So Alright, so then I take this off the wheel, I look for that spot where I have my X next to that bat pin. I take this one off, which doesn't matter how I put that one back on top, but it does matter how this one goes back on the wheel. Now the bat pins are centered, you know, are running evenly with the wheel head, but the way this bat that I'm using, it may be off center based on how the holes are put in, so if you put them on one way or the other it could affect if the pot is still running true once you do that so and that's a pretty good fit and I'll just use my wire hold the bat against my chest and pull it up and towards me Lift that off, and now I've added that four or four and a half pounds to the uh, the bot the base there. Now, as I've, as I've explained before, this is where I kind of change how I throw. I'll actually throw the rest of this pot for the most part, other than the very top. I'll add a little bit of water even right now, just to kind of clean up and 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 get this top shape the way I want it but the rest of the pot I'm actually not going to add any water back to it I'm just going to throw with a rib in my right hand and uh, my hand being clean on the inside yeah there's a little bit of moisture on the inside of the pot 
but it's not like dripping wet with water. Okay, so the first thing I'm, I'm trying to do here is I want to get a kind of a fluid shape so that I don't have any hard turns anywhere. And then I'm going to start bellying this out as I do. And I think I want to, I want to work on the bottom of this a little bit first. I want to cut this in a little bit. And then I want to push in to make the foot there. Definitely going to stretch this out considerably, but I don't want to do too much at once because I want to make sure that I keep this running true as I do this, which with the clay being stiffer, that's actually easier to do. It's harder to knock a cylinder that's already running true out of center or out of true if you're using stiffer clay. It's harder to actually knock it off than if it was soft clay. So that's one big benefit to using stiffer clay is that if you can get it centered, it's easier to keep centered or it's harder to knock it out of center, either way you want to say it. Because it's kind of, you know, supporting itself, holding itself up. I'm actually going to finish the rest of this shape from the top I'm going to push out and down to meet where I was going on my way up. got a little spot there on the inside where I put those two pieces together where I can feel there's a thickness difference so I'm going to work on that a little bit and if I don't think I can get it evened out by pushing on it I may actually use a, uh, a trim tool and go in there and trim it out a little bit but I think I may have gotten it that that time thickness that I have here at the top for the rim because that gives a good seat for the for the lid to sit on and also all the things that I, I make for my wood kiln will all have wads placed on the bottom and if they have lids we'll be placing wads on the rim of the pot and actually setting the lid on the pot as we fire it and so you need to have a good thick rim for the wads to sit on and then to be able to set the lid on top of the pot. I think that's about what I wanted right there, so. put a line right here kind of separates where the 
belly of the pot changes to the uh, top where the lid's gonna sit on. Just drip some water down the side. I'm gonna clean that off. So I want to shape this a little bit at the top here, so I want to add some water inside and out. I think that's pretty good. So there we go. I got to make a lid, of course, put handles on this, decorate it, all those fun things. But uh, there's uh, pot number one for wood firing number one in my brand new kiln, and uh, this is uh, this is awesome. This is kind of like uh, I don't know. This is not the beginning of the end, but this is kind of like a, a big milestone for me. To have, have uh, worked on this idea and this project of having this wood kiln, uh, been working on it for quite a while on the idea, and now to actually be making pots that are actually going to be fired in it, that's, uh, that's something else. It really is. Um, to me, it's a big deal, and uh, I'm excited about it. I'm still probably a little anxious, a little nervous about the whole process, but uh, man, I tell you, just the... I mean, you guys know. You guys know the feeling of, of accomplishing something that you've been working at for a long time. That's a great feeling. That's part of, it's one of the best things in life that you can experience is that feeling. And uh, just knowing that, uh, that the last 25, 26 years of my life of all that I've been working on is not coming to a head as far as a completion, but it's coming to a point where I think uh, things are really going to turn a corner and I can uh, really begin to uh, enjoy what I do even more if that's possible and uh, and really see some success, uh, more success and uh, just be able to just really uh, bless my family and bless the world with, with the things that I make and, uh, and I hope that it does because I hope the things that I make inspire and encourage other people. Uh, and uh, even if they don't make pottery, like, like I've said before, that I hope the things that I make can just inspire them uh, by, the, by the craftsmanship and the hard work and effort that goes into what I make, um, that that ends up being uh, something that inspires them in their life and encourages them. So anyway, um, you may not even be able to see my head while I'm talking here, but either way, um, Hope you enjoyed this and hope you enjoyed the process of me reclaiming that clay. And uh, we'll see you very soon. Thank you guys for being here. Hey, and thank you for all the feedback on that last video. Um, and uh, either way, whether you liked it or didn't like it, I appreciate the honest feedback. And uh, I'm, uh, I work really hard on not, not worrying whether people do like things or not, but uh, just had some things I wanted to talk about and get off my chest. and. Uh, your feedback was was very uh, was was perfect. So thank you very much, and we'll see you soon. Go make some amazing pots. Bye.